Recently, my daughter, Billy, who's 16 now, she had a flirtation with Mike Todd and Elizabeth's grandson, Reese. And when they first met, they were trying to work out how it all fit together, you know, and if they were related in any way. So I thought about it. Now, when I think I need this enormous chalkboard with a chart to hold my thoughts, because I have so many zooming this way and that, and then it's also helpful if I can have some pictures and a pen so I can organize the insanity that is my thought process and my family. Welcome, class, to Hollywood 101. Thank you so much for enrolling. All right, so over here at the top left of the chart, we have Eddie and Debbie. In the 50s, they were known as America's sweethearts. Now, for those of you that are too young to relate to any of this, try to think of it this way. Think of Eddie as Brad Pitt, Debbie as Jennifer Aniston, and Elizabeth as Angelina Jolie. Does that help? That should help. All right. So, Eddie consoles Elizabeth with his penis. Elizabeth takes a movie in Rome, big budget film called Cleopatra. She meets her co-star, Richard Burton. So, goodbye, Eddie. Hello, Richard. These two hit it off like gangbusters, whatever that means. And they met and they married. They had a wild, passionate relationship with Violet eyes and Welsh accents and acting and diamonds and drinking and dancing and sex and joy and love. But it was a passionate relationship, and those can become stormy. So then what do you think happens? That's right. They get divorced. But they have good memories of each other. So what do you think they do then? They remarry. That's right. Now, keep that in mind, because it might come up again. So now let's go to Eddie. Poor Eddie. How do you follow an act like Elizabeth Taylor? Well, he manages somehow. He pulls something together. He meets a blonde, cute, perky little actress. Sound familiar? No, it's not Debbie again. It's a tribute to Debbie. It's Connie Stevens. So they meet. And they have Jolie Fisher from the sitcom Till Death and Trisha Fisher from New York. Oh, wait, wait a second. Did Eddie forget to marry Connie? He did. He forgot to marry her. But eventually he remembers, so they get married. But as many, many people know, legal sex is just shite compared to the premarital stuff that I know so many couples have had in cars. So, they divorce. But don't worry, Eddie's not alone for long, because now he meets and marries Miss Louisiana. Yes, yeah, she's three years older than I am, and she calls me dear, which I love. I love it. Now, I thought this relationship would go on and on and on, because. You know, Miss Louisiana is in her early 20s, and Eddie's in his late 50s, so she had so many years to devote to him. But what do you think happens? Yep, they divorce. I was stunned. But don't worry, he's not alone for long, because now he meets and marries this really lovely woman named Betty Lynn. Betty is uh, from China, and she takes fantastic care of my father, and believe me, he needs it. And she's the same age as Eddie, which hasn't happened since the Debbie and Liz stuff. And the other good thing about Betty is that she's rich, which is handy because Eddie's gone bankrupt four times by now. So they're happy for 10, 15 glorious years. But then what do you think happens? That one's actually a trick question because they don't divorce. Betty passes away. It was sad. But don't worry. He's not alone for long because now my father dates all of Chinatown. He does this partly as a tribute to Betty, partly because my father has had so many facelifts that he looks Asian himself. 
So it's more right that way. You know, they're more like a match set. Both hands, one heart, two moods, and a head. A few years ago, my daughter and I visited my father in San Francisco, where he lives, because there's a really big Chinatown there. Anyway, the day before, he had just gotten these tiny little hearing aids. You know the ones that they fit right inside your ears? They're really, really expensive. Some people say 3000 others say 5 Anyway, really expensive. So he'd gotten them the day before. So the night before, he didn't want to lose them or forget where they were. So he'd put them in his pillbox next to his bed so he'd remember where they were in the morning. Yep, that's right. He ate them. So whenever he couldn't hear my daughter or myself, we'd yell into his stomach or his ass. Now, he subsequently got those hearing aids again, and I had the opportunity to see them. They're the size of a lima bean, a rubber lima bean with an antenna. Now, look, I adore pills. I'm a huge fan, but these were like none I'd ever seen. Now, I don't know how you are in the morning. I'm not that sharp, but I think I would know if I were eating a rubber lima bean with an antenna. Twice! Well, if you have a life like mine, then these experiences gradually accumulate until you become known as a survivor. This is a term that I truly loathe. But the thing is, when you are a survivor, which, fine, I reluctantly agree that I am, and who over 40 isn't, when you are a survivor, in order to be a really good one, you have to keep getting in trouble to show off your gift. My mother says, well, dear, what are the choices? Not surviving? <laughs>